Hey guys, it's me, and today I have an update to my image converter, since everyone's been clamoring for something that actually vectorizes the image instead of making it look so pixelated. Uh, I finally figured out a way to do that. So, first off, you'll need yourself an image program such as Inkscape, which is free, or you can use something like Adobe Illustrator. Essentially, you just go to the site, go to download, uh, select your thing, select your... yeah, and then it'll download and install and pretty quick from there. So the next thing you need to do is you go to your Inkscape program and you go to File, Open, and just look through an image you want to do. So today, we're going to be doing our mate Ajit Pai. This is an image I found online, but you can use any image. You just gotta select them here. And go to Path, Trace Bitmap. Um, I think 10 works pretty well. You want to make sure you stack your scans, otherwise it won't look properly. And because this is an actual real image, you probably want to smooth as well. Uh, you have your options here. I'll get into those later. Um, you can see what it looks like if you just hit the update. Make sure you select it. And then hit the update. And then when you like it, you hit OK. And it'll generate your dude. So as you can see, it's not perfect, but it looks pretty good. So when you're happy with that, you go to File, Save As, and then you want to just save it as an Inkscape SVG. You can save it as the other one, but yeah. But the important thing is that you have an SVG here. So yeah, you do that. Then you go to your Python program. So from here, uh, we want Happy Wheels Converter 5.py and you want to make sure that your images are in the same folder as this and just to set up your Python make sure that you have um, SVG Write, SVG Path Tools, SVG Path um, I don't think any of these other ones are required but make oh and make sure you also have pillow and just to in order to get these you just search for the one you want and select it and then you hit install package and it should work without problems but yeah make sure you have uh, pillow svg.path svg path tools svg write you might need a few others of these if you get an error you, it's probably because you need something else that I forgot about. Sorry. Um, but yeah, I remember that was an issue from last time. So anyway, so the things you want to do, you want to get your SVG file, and then you want your original image file. Basically, this just determines what the uh, image dimensions are, because for some reason SVG files don't really have that property. Uh, you set your output text document file, you set your old and new pixel sizes, essentially just scales it. Uh, yeah, and you can put where you want your image to show up in the converter, and then as before, you have your ID offset. This is just so that um, you don't get that weird thing I showed you in the last video. So you just hit run, and it should take not too long, and yeah, it'll be complete. So, what you do from here is, you go here, you copy your crap, you go to your level editor, you go to load level, and then you paste it in. Alright, and it finally pasted, so now you hit import, and it should look pretty good. So, from there, a nice thing you can do is that if you just select all of it and you don't like the size of it, you can just uh, do your normal scaling tools and it'll scale it up correctly. So yeah, that's a nice thing. But of course, as you can see, one of the things is that each of these colors is their own shape, which 
results in some weird stuff like this. So if you wanted to get rid of that background, uh, you, there'd be a number of ways to do that, but so far there's not really a good way of doing that, short of, um, sort of like manually doing something. So, um, that's one thing to keep in mind when you select your image is you want to make sure that your background is something that uh, will work well within your level or that you can easily cover it up. Um, so yeah. Uh, but the real use for something like this is uh, for actual more realistic vector graphics. So for instance, if you go uh, in here, we have our lovely effective shopper lady. Um, let's zoom in on her. So we select her. We go to our path, trace bitmap. Now, um, since she's a vector, uh, art, you don't need smooth. Um, and we don't necessarily need all that many colors, but I think eight is fine for our purposes. So. Then we can hit OK. It should do its thing. And yeah, so you see it did its thing. Um, so you go save as, you do that. Um, then you can go here, go to change the name to something appropriate. make sure that you got it correct here as being PNG or JPG or whatever it is. This is always needs to be the SVG. Um, so yeah, and then we run it and yeah, zero seconds. This one's pretty quick compared to the other one. So you can just copy it, come in here, load, paste, and wait. Alright, it pasted, and you can see this right here. Now, it should be a little bit laggy, but it's actually pretty smooth compared to what the other pixelated thing was. And just as before, you can select all of it, and you can change around the setting, the uh, size settings as well, and it'll be nice and smooth. So. And yeah, as you can see, it's a bunch of these different pieces put together. So, anyway, so there are a few other considerations. First of all, this doesn't work very well for opacity just because of the way Inkscape does things. So, and the other consideration is the fact that uh, it has to make those stacks of objects as well. So, Inkscape does have an option to not do that, but um, it doesn't work very well. So if you take a look at what it does, alright, yeah. So this is what happens if you don't stack the scans, is for some reason it creates these little gaps here. And you gen in general you don't want that, unless that's the aesthetic you're going for. So, and that's, so unfortunately that's why you have to stack up the scans. So yeah, in general, um, it, you can use any SVG file that you find on the internet, but um, you might not necessarily uh, get it to work because um, SVG file formats can include shapes like rectangles, circles, uh, other such things that uh, this program doesn't look for. It specifically looks for things that are done in an image trace, which are lines and bezier curves formed by making a path, and those other shapes uh, won't show up. So if you get a value error, such as unrecognized curve type, or you um, 
you run this program and you don't get something that looks the same as what you put into it, uh, that's probably why. And as a result, there's a few other things, like for instance, the fill color that I'm looking for, uh, as different SVG programs will um, place that color value in different places, so I won't necessarily be able to find them. So uh, those are some things to think about if you use a different program other than Inkscape or if you get your SVG files from the internet. But other than that, this should uh, make you guys' lives much easier, and uh, you should be able to check out the link in the description. I'll try to put everything you need uh, in there. So yeah, thanks guys. Bye-bye. Uh,